Good evening. Thanks for tuning in. So I've noticed that lion heads, particularly on gargoyles, pop up over all different regions of the earth, and particularly in architecture. So I thought it was about time that I looked into the symbolism behind a lion. Now a, a lion is a beautiful and majestic animal and certainly if I wanted to use it as a symbol for my business or my family coat of arms I think a lion is a great choice it's a beautiful animal it's strong it's powerful so I'm sure that there's benign reasons for choosing a, a lion as you know a symbol it's a beautiful animal but anyway I do want to get into the symbolism of lions and why they end up showing up everywhere on earth particularly architecture but also in national symbolism on country flags and stamps and elsewhere so I haven't scripted this but uh, without wasting any more time I'm just gonna get right into it okay so to start things off here's a definition that Google presents the lion symbolizes strength courage and leadership in one word Dharma the roar is considered as one of voices of goddess a lion's roar stops you it is a terror that shakes you up and draws you into something beautiful okay so here's an old image from 1905 or around there of the Cincinnati Ohio Central Union Station building and like a lot of these old pictures they are uh, strangely high definition you can zoom in on them anyway this is an old building here unfortunately I cut off the top but it's got one of those uh, ball shaped things on the top anyway all along the outside of this building you have gargoyle faces and they do appear as lions so let's zoom in so this guy's waving here's one here and here and they aren't just they aren't just lions they're almost like personified lions they're kind of half lion half man I don't know what that one is can't zoom in let's see how far we can zoom in no, not that well okay this image is taken from Google Maps and it's in Moscow Russia it's 8 Ulitsa Prechestanka Street excuse me probably saying that wrong anyway I, I uh, went searching for this after I watched a Philip Druzhinin video because he walked by here in one of his latest videos so you have a lion here and I circled it okay and here he is in one of his video clips and actually this is another building further down the street this building here and you can see there's these lion heads here and I'll show a better picture here they are here so you've got these lions I don't know if that's like a man's face turned into a lion like a personified lion and I got in a little closer you have these winged winged bird winged horses I think that's a horse with um, this toroidal piece down here too on this side and this side this v this fellow here VM has been making a lot of uh, local videos from where he lives I take it he's from somewhere near St. Paul Minnesota and he's kind of showcasing some of the local buildings which is great especially if we can't be there um, so anyway yeah he captured this and this is from Blair Blair Arcade which is in St. Paul Minnesota it's kind of like an old I don't know I don't know what to call it like an old department store maybe turned into apartments so this is the building looks like apartments and I took these from his video again this is clearly a mud flutter you've got these basement entrances all the way down there's a uh, dining tables here for local restaurants here's one of the entrance and of course this is what I want to talk about
Okay, once again I have like a free trial version of some screen recording software, so I have to record everything in five minute segments, just in case you're wondering. So this is Blair House, and this is a zoomed out shot of a lion. This is a different one, because that's a different face. Now is that cast, or was that chiseled out by hand? Or, crazy to say it, was it somehow machined? Well, probably not machined, because how do, you, how do you get on the inside of the mouth? But how is that made? Maybe there is a, a reasonable explanation, and I just don't know about it yet. Okay, this is uh, St. Paul's Seminary School of, Divini of Divinity. I guess where you can train to become a priest. Or the head of a church. I don't know too much about it. Again, this is in VM's YouTube videos, so this is where I got it from. I hope he doesn't mind me using it. And I chose it because you've got, well, in this one instance, you've got a lion head. I think that's a lion. And again, these, I'm not going to cover it in this video, but you've got these, these toroidal things show up all over the place, even more common than lion heads. Okay, what you're looking at here is a Canadian version of a certain publishing company originally from New York from the 1950s and I don't know if this is a lion or this is a man but this showed up in a book I was reading I won't say the name of the book doesn't really matter and I was like a little unsettled by it because it's a pretty menacing face it doesn't look very nice uh, forgive me if maybe that's somebody close to the publisher and maybe somebody in their family they took an image but anyway it's it uh, I didn't forget about it, so I went back to the book and found the image. Here's the uh, uh, American symbol. I'll, I'll read this. Vintage Books Publishing Company. Vintage Books is a publishing imprint established in 1954 by Alfred A. Knopf. The company was purchased by Random House Publishing in April 1960 and is currently a subdivision of Random House. In 1990, Vintage UK was set up in the United Kingdom. And then, uh, yeah... 1954 it was set up. There's an Alfred A. Knopf Sr. This is the gentleman who originally set up the publishing company. I don't know if this is the original symbol for the company. I don't know. I don't know about that. But then the son took over and his son had the same name. So if you read the history it's a little confusing. So here's Alfred A. Knopf the sen uh, Sr. This is his biography. I did read this all because uh, I found it personally interesting as related to a book I was reading, but I'm not going to cover that here. But I will say one interesting remark that I suppose this man had made regarding publishing, and I just wanted to say it so I can come back to it later for my own personal reasons. Anyway, one of his comments is, too many books are published and they are overpriced, he told the Saturday Review. These are things about which all publishers agree publishers agree and about which no pub publisher does anything so that's an interesting comment that you know books are generally cheap and they overproduce them so what does that say maybe in a certain sense and, and actually a book is a cheap form of entertainment as far as the entertainment value you can get out of a book compared to the price you know 10 20 30 40 dollar book you can get hours of entertainment out of a book interesting comment the books can even be cheaper and maybe maybe not going too deep but maybe it's scarcity that actually makes material things that we can purchase in the store scarcity is what actually makes things valuable because maybe books are relatively cheap to produce anyway I'm getting off the topic of lions but this particular man and I didn't go into detail about him this particular man started this vintage publishing and there's a little bit of insight into that scary lion image that's used for his publishing company because apparently he started using such symbolism on some of the original books he started publishing I'm not going to go into the details I suppose you could pause it this book actually might have been about the Medusa legend or myth because actually that's the title but I don't know kind of a scary face so this guy puts scary faces on his books and his publishing company logo no disrespect but uh, Yep. Okay, here's a blog. 
Okay, here is a blog, and this is a little bit older. This is eight years old. It comes from uh, it's from 2010, and it's from somebody who lives in New York and has taken some pictures of some lion gargoyles. And I thought I'd just read it into my video because it uh, said some neat things. Oh, I can't. I can't. I, this is not a. This is not the internet. One second. Okay, I queued it up here. Patience and fortitude. The marble lions standing guard outside the New York Public Library main branch are probably the best known, but images of the lion of the jungle adorn lots of New York buildings. The one above comes from 675 6th Avenue, now a Trader Joe's, that's a local business, now a Trader Joe's. This st stately ladies mile structure once housed a Barnes and Noble and was originally home base of the Adams Dry Goods Company. Lions symbolize strength, courage, and power, the latter especially worshipped in New York City. At left and right, two lions from Union Square and 26th Street carry garlands between their teeth. The lion at left, with the ring in its jaw, is carved into the facade of the Alhambra Ballroom Building in Harlem. Opened in 1926, this dance hall hosted Bessie Smith, Jelly Roll Morton, and a waitress named Billie Holiday. So some big names. Okay, I just have to mark down something here. Okay, I actually thought that this was neat, and, and I should go look up some of these uh, examples in this ephemeral blog is the name of the blog. So I'm going to look up some of the examples. Here's the New York Public Library. I cut the top off. It says New York Public Library. Take my word for it. Maybe you can zoom in. No, it doesn't really show it. Okay. And, you know, if you went to the website, you can see actually an explanation as to the history of this particular lion statue and what it cost and the nicknames of it. And it's part of the history of New York. I won't read that here. Okay, this is on 6th Avenue. Again, this blog that I was reading had mentioned this, so here's a business, Trader Joe's. I'm not sure what they sell, but uh, you have this lion's head on the top here. I zoomed in. Got some initials here. Okay, uh, on this Trader Joe building, like, I'll go back. If you go, like, around the corner over this way, if you can see my cursor here, if you go around and over this way, I guess on 21st and 6th Avenue, this building, this one we're looking at here, has these gargoyle faces all over the entire building. I mean, just, it's covered in it. And these aren't lions. These are, like, human faces. And they're kind of creepy, and it's curious to know how these were even made. Like, were they a cast of somebody's face? Is it somebody's family members from the general contractor who built this building? I looked this up. Talk about it a little bit more. Oh, no, no I looked up a different building. But this building may not be like pre-mud flood. This might be like early 1900s. I don't know the exact detail of this building. But yeah, it's got these faces on it. I don't know if I can zoom in. Well, I, I got a closer image here. Yeah, here's a couple examples. These ones aren't as frightening. There's some other, you know, faces with, like, these horrifying expressions on them. Anyway. Okay, this is a different building. This is uh, on the other side of, like, Union Square Park. There's actually a big park in the middle of all these buildings, if you look it up on Google Maps. And this building has these lion heads as well. And it's got these toroidal things at the top and this ball, whatever that is. But you know, these are these are common symbols and this garland or wreath, these show up everywhere too. Looks like the kind of thing you see at presidential nominations and things like that. And here you got some toroidal things as well. I stand to look into those a little bit more. But anyway, this building is called the Bank of Metropolis Building. It was built in 1905. And I guess the Bank of Metropolis had something to, something to do with the District of Columbia. And it doesn't seem to exist today, which is a strange thing.
Okay, so I do get a little bit sidetracked, and I, I probably will here. So I was talking about lion head gargoyles. But here we have the bank of the metropolis, um, and it doesn't seem it doesn't seem to exist today. Historically, it existed, and uh, obviously, it was uh, wealthy enough to you know create its own big, massive. I think it's twenty stories or something like that building. Anyway, get some more images of it. Yeah, okay, I zoomed in. Bank of the Metropolis. Okay, this is inside the Bank of the Metropolis. This is beautiful. Marble going all the way up the stairs. These This beautiful uh, machined woodwork. It's hard to believe this stuff doesn't get damaged with people coming in and out of the, out of the building. Um, Flatter's, Flat Earth British Sub, Lee. Here's one of these domed uh, arches over... A lintel, I suppose that's what this is called in stone stonemason type of language. It's got this domed shaped lintel over top. This is on the inside. Here's an outside picture. This is obviously after 1905. It's probably got one of these sticks with a little ball on the top. So conspiracy RS, you made a video on those on those balls with a or stick with a ball on top. And here's another picture. This is the the bank of the metropolis being built. So this is like pre-1905. I have it up here. I labeled the picture as 1902. I don't know how accurate that is. But that's that particular building being built. Again, I, I was started this video off talking about lion's head gargoyles, but here I am talking about the bank of metropolis. The bank of the metropolis. And I did look that up on Google, and then I looked it up on Google Images, and actually there's an old banknote from 1844. Um, right? And I don't know if that's pre-flood. <laughs> but one question I hope you, the listener, might think about is, is that's pretty amazing that in 1844 they had this high-detail printing. I mean, when did, how did they have the ability to uh, print this banknote. I mean, I've heard of things like lithographs, but really, let's... I, I, I can't get my head around that. And banknotes, stamps, I can't figure that out, how they had the technology even back then to print this. But that's a different topic. Yeah, the Bank of the Metropolis. That's probably worth uh, looking into more. Maybe worthy of a video. Apparently you can buy this for five dollars. Oh, no, no, maybe that's that's the value of the note. Okay, I won't talk too much. Okay, so this is... I forgot what this was an image of. Oh yeah, you know, if you continue walking up from Union Square in New York, New York City, or New York City, New York State, in New York, whatever, you know what I mean, New York, New York, you will find lion's heads on everything. They're over all kinds of buildings, and they're a dime a dozen. So actually... Oh, these almost look like cobra heads. Uh, probably like a toroidal thing, but they almost look like cobra heads. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's an interesting number. That will come up later when I show an image of Anchor Wat, and you see a massive lion statue next to uh, a seven-headed serpent. So I don't, I'm not saying that's related to this. I'm not saying that at all. I could be just seeing things that aren't really even there, like maybe these aren't serpents. Again, you've got this blank shield. That seems to come up again, too. Okay, moving on. Okay, this is, uh, I can't even remember where this image was from now. I think it was like East 18th Street in New York, somewhere around there. And um, again, you got these toroidal things and these other toroidal things. This garland or wreath, this shows up and everything. So I kind of a note to self to look into that, maybe even make a video on it. Of course, these are not lion's heads, so don't want to get off topic too much. This is probably the most, I, arguably the most iconic lion statue in the world. There might be others, but this one is in Trafalgar Square. Of course, this is not a gargoyle. This is a statue, and I wanted to talk about lion gargoyles. Here's one. Apparently, it's at Buckingham Palace. I haven't looked into that, so hopefully that's true. That's where that is. This is at the House of Parliament. Right, so this is, uh, I can't read the motto. 
Okay, so where was I? This is the uh, House of Parliament, I guess, in, in the UK. And you have the coat of arms. Now this is very similar to the like the British coat of arms, but it's also almost exactly like the coat of arms of Queen Elizabeth II. I think the only difference is that the motto on the bottom is uh, slightly different on each of the coat of arms. Once again, you've got the crown, and you've got a lion, and a lion wearing a crown as well, the same crown, it looks, and you've got this unicorn all wrapped up in chains. Now, I know that the House of Commons in Ottawa in Canada has the same symbolism, and this is even on the coat of arms of Canada. So, same thing. But again, you've got a lion wearing a crown. What's it saying? Premier League uh, English Soccer. They use a lion, but he's wearing a crown. England, you know, you see this on the soccer jerseys. That's got three lions. I, I guess these are like the Tudor Rose or the Stuart Rose. I don't know the difference. These are the roses. This is the Canadian coat of arms. Again, you've got the like the shamrock, which represents Ireland, uh, the thistle, I guess, which represents Scotland, and then the rose, which represents England. I don't know if something represents Wales. I'm not sure. This probably represents Wales because Wales has like a no. That's a lion still. You know, Wales is represented by a a dragon. And then you've got the fleur de lis, which I don't know if necessarily represents like Quebec. I'm not sure. I cut off the crown at the top. Looks just like this one here. Okay, so this is the this is very similar. This is the Queen Elizabeth II coat of arms. Unfortunately, I cut off the lion here. Looks like the lion of Judah. I'm just saying it looks like that. I'm not saying it is. And he's also wearing this similar crown. And Dieu et mon droit. So God and my right. So that's the Queen Elizabeth. Okay, so this is going completely different area around the world. This is in Angkor Wat. I better get this right. Yes, that's that's where it is. Just didn't leave a description on the picture. And you have a lion. Obviously the head has been knocked off or something and you have these seven serpents right I kind of pointed that out on some previous a previous building in New York I'm not sure it's the same thing okay anchor Wat again you've got these kind of almost like protector lions at the entrance of some of the temples a lot of the lions there have the heads knocked off and it looks like maybe local um, tradespeople have repaired the lions. This is a symbol of India and you'll see it on stamps and money I think and it's a, it's four lions it tends to be a symbol they use. And I've seen that elsewhere even outside of symbology of India I've seen four lions together in, in artwork seems to come up. This is obviously, uh, forgive me, I don't know more about it, but the uh, a symbol of India. We've got the wheel. Shows up on their flag. Okay, now I'm getting into Hindu, Hindu mythology. And you have this, I'm probably saying it wrong, Narasimha, 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 God this lion-headed god. I can't say I know too much more about it. Maybe I should look that up on uh, Google and read it into the video. Okay, Narasimha, Sanskrit, literally man-lion, is an avatar of the Hindu god Vishnu, one who incarnates in the form of part lion and part man to destroy an evil and religious persecution and calamity on earth, thereby restoring Dharma. Well, I'll just read this till the video runs out. Narasimha iconography shows him with a human torso and lower body with a lion face and claws, typically with a demon, Hiranyakashipu, in his... 
Okay, Nara Simha is in the process of killing this um, demon here, who's Hiranyakashipu. Forgive me if I'm saying it wrong, I probably am. Anyway, that's as much as I read about this Hindu god, but it is interesting that it comes up. With this particular lion headed headed man god, you've got um you know, again these seven serpents, these show up that showed up at Anchor Watt. And even possibly in the architecture on the side of that building in New York. You've got these oil lamps. These lamps tend to show up on architecture as well. You've got a six pointed star. Here again is Nara Simha. I'll zoom in a little bit. And forgive me, it is a gory image, and I don't look for that kind of thing. But actually, there's far worse when you type in the name of this lion-headed god on Google Images. And it seems to be like every image is of this gory scene where this man is being eaten from the inside. I'm not saying it's connected, but it, it almost reminds me a little bit of how Adam, like Adam and Eve, Adam was opened up and they took his rib out. I'm not saying that's what's happening here. I think he's killing this demon god apparently. Here's another image. And I know you can find some other images where they explain with uh, words the tools that he's using here. But one thing I notice here is there's this garland and once again this garland tends to show up on a lot of architecture even in North America and around the world. I don't want to get too deep into it but I know mm, some of the Gnostic texts it talks about a veil between the worlds so I don't know if this could be a veil at all. I don't want to get too carried away. I don't know that to be true so maybe I shouldn't have even said that. Narasimha, Narasimha. Here he is here and he's eaten people and people are also praying to him. He's got a scepter in his hand. When he's got those multiple hands sometimes he's seen holding like a conch shell and like a lotus blossom seems to be some of the symbols and they represent different things. This is also Narasimha. Here he is as a lion. Hard to believe that's a lion. It looks a little bit like some other type of creature but it's uh, it's got a man's body Okay, so this is not Narasimha. This is Durga, Durga the goddess divine mother, and she tends to sit on a lion, right? I'm not saying it's the same thing. Well, I'm not going to give my insight. I've got some other ideas. I'm not going to say it in this video. Here they are again slaying this man or demon man, whatever he is. So again, this is Durga, not Narasimha, and it's got some description as to the different things that she's holding. So you have her riding on a lion of courage. This is the arms of Ma, divine qualities. Uh, forgiveness and blessing, I guess, is represented by the hand. A club of loyalty and love, a sword, which is discrimination. I've also seen this with a slash and it says Yama. Yama is the destroyer in the Hindu pantheon, so I know that's represented represents the sword as well. Chakra of righteousness, it's almost like a compact disc. No disrespect, just kind of what it looks like. I've seen that in other images. A conch, conch shell, happiness, a trident, courage, arrow and bows, which represents character, lotus, which is detachment, and red color, which is passion. Here you have Durga, not Narasimha. I d and I don't think this is Narasimha, because this is actually a full lion, not like a man lion. But anyway, there's this poor guy who is getting hurt once again. Here they are here. And if you like these images, just Google image search them for yourself.
Okay, changing countries. This is the Forbidden City in Beijing, China, and there's two lions at the entrance of the palace. They almost have a dragon-like appearance to them. And I'm not saying it's the same thing at all, but they have these leashes. It almost looks like like on the Queen Elizabeth II coat of arms. I'm not saying that's what it is, but it actually has a very similar appearance to that. A belt. That's the word I was looking for. A belt. This is also at the Forbidden City, but you'll notice this is actually a different lion. These ones are a gold color and these are what's that bronze or or is it even some type of copper because it corrodes green I'm not sure and I've seen this before where he's stopping on this ball shaped thing again this is the forbidden city in China with lions guarding the gate of the forbidden city looks like an older image this is not, this has nothing to do with lions, but when I was looking up lion statues in China, this other massive statue came up, and I'm ashamed to say I've never even heard of this. So apparently, um, China has built a big statue which looks a little bit like a war, a war god, and I couldn't help it, I'm just going to include this in the video as well, because it's massive, it's huge. So, yeah, it won't take up too much time, but this thing is huge. I will try and remember to leave a link of this in the description below, but uh, here's an article talking about in the area of Guan Yu. In China, they have this new statue here. It's from the Olympics. Maybe I'm out of touch and this is not even a new thing. Okay, the country of Iran on their flag has a lion on it. I th think it might be the Lion of Judah, but I'm not 100% sure. I've seen it as well with like a crown on its head, and there is some sun symbolism as well. This is the, I don't know, coat of, coat of arms, probably got the word wrong, coat of arms for Iran. Well, here's the Lion King movie, and I was thinking about including a summary of this movie in with my video. Okay, I will read it. I'm going to read here. The Lion King tells the story of Simba. That sounds a little bit similar to Nara Simha, the, the Hindu god. I'm not saying it's the same thing. The Lion King tells the story of Simba, a young lion who is to succeed his father, Mufasa, as king of the Pride Lands. However, after Simba's uncle, Scar, Mufasa's jealous younger brother, murders Mufasa, Simba is manipulated into thinking he was responsible and flees into exile. Sounds like Adam leaving the garden. Hmm. Upon... I, I shouldn't say these things. I, I, I should keep some of my thoughts to myself. I've got to read this. Upon maturation, living with two wastrels, Simba is given some valuable perspective from his childhood friend Nala and his shaman. Rafiki, before returning to challenge Scar to end his tyranny and take his place in the circle of life as the rich, as the rightful king. Okay, so I'm going to look at some stamps. I pulled up a bunch off of Google Images. So this is in Iran and you've got the lion again and the sun and the sword. This is in India. Of course India actually has lions. This is in Sweden and you've got three crowns. I think that shows up on hockey jerseys. This is in Italian Somaliland from I think the early 1900s. This is pretty old, but you have a lion here and then there's a crown. I don't know what Anna is. Anna? I uh, cut it off a little bit, but it says Herr Ijzend, 1945. This is from the Netherlands. It's Dutch. Here you have the lion with a crown.
Okay, yeah, I got cut off. Okay, so this is from the Netherlands. Here you have a lion with a crown and a sword slaying this kind of like this water creature, this serpent water creature. I have seen this come up. If you look at my On the Origin of the World, towards the end, there's a name for this type of creature. So this this has come up before for me. Okay, here's an old stamp from 1924. British Empire Exhibition. Got the crown, a lion. This time the crown is over the man's head. I guess that's the king. Okay, this is from Finland, 1883. So this is a very old one. And you have a lion with a sword. He's standing on a sword. I think that's a crown, but there's at least there's a crown here too. This is India. Saw a similar statue like this before, but now we see it on a stamp. This is actually not three lions, but four lions. Apparently there's four lions, and that's a pretty prominent symbol of India. I think this is actually the symbol of the Congress party in, in India, which is the main political party, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be wrong. This is in Norway. It, instead of a sword, of course a Norwegian lion has to have an axe, but he also has a crown. Okay, this is in Paraguay, and what this says is Paz y Justicia. And I think, oh, I, I read this, I don't know Spanish, but it says Peace and Justice. Okay, I, I always thought that South Africa was a country, but apparently it was a company. Uh, this is from British South Africa Company. That was a little bit, bit of a joke. I know it's a country, a company. And uh, you have a lion, you got a crown. That's a Tudor rose. Incorporated by Royal Charter. That's like an original letters patent. That's like an original type of corporation. Okay, this is in Iraq, Iraq. And this is old, this is from 1940s. And you have the Lion of Babylon. And I was having trouble looking at this as to what's going on with the lion's head. I can't tell if he's turning it to the side or wh whether the head is actually missing in this case. And I don't want to be rude, but it looks like there's almost a figure underneath the lion, almost like a human body. And hair? Like, could it even be a female? I know that's rude, and I don't go out of my way to show these things, but I did see this, so maybe I'm not the only one. If you see that, well, don't leave a comment, but... Okay, next. Okay, these are old British Hong Kong stamps, and almost like on the front of the House of Parliament, you have the symbol of the lion, and, well, I always thought it was a unicorn on the other side, but this looks more like a dragon. But it has a lion's tail, so it's like a... Is it a lion-headed dragon? I don't know. Okay, I looked a few images up on, like, lion symbolism, kind of like occult symbolism. It does come up in alchemy. Oh, I think the thing I wanted to show was that lions sometimes have wings especially in statues and gargoyles and things. I was hoping to find something more interesting as far as an expl explanation for a winged lion, but I didn't get much. Uh, the winged lion is a mythological creature that resembles a lion with bird-like wings. It's a little bit redundant. Okay, this is an image. Uh, kind of cool. And it says, Winged Lions from the Emblem Book. Atalanta Fugiens by Michael Meyer, first published in 1617, and it shows some other instances in mythology, Sumerian, Akkadian, and Persian, where the lion kind of come up, the lion comes up. Okay, this is the Lion of Judah, but my video segment is almost at five minutes, so I'm going to start a new video. Okay, here we go. Okay, so just for the sake of providing a definition, the Lion of Judah is the symbol of the Hebrew tribe of Judah, like the Jewish tribe. According to the Torah, the tribe consists of the descendants of Judah, the fourth son of Jacob. 
The association between Judah and the lion, most likely the Asiatic lion, can first be found in the blessing given by Jacob to his son Judah in the book of Genesis. The lion of Judah is also mentioned in the book of Re Revelation as a term representing Jesus according to Christian theology. The Lion of Judah was also one of the titles of the Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie and was depicted on the flag of Ethiopia from 1897 to 1974. Due to its, its association with Selassie, it continues to be an important symbol among the members of the Rastafari movement. Okay, I don't think I'm going to read much more than that, but uh, this picture here will come up in an image that I've uh, taken off of Google Images, and that's in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Okay. Well, okay, maybe I better read this quickly, too. Not just because it's a very popular thing with a lion on it. I'm not trying to implicate the Lions Club or anything like that. Uh, Lions Club International is an international secular non-political service organization establish, established originally in 1916 in Evansville, Indiana by Dr. William Perry Woods. As of April 2015, it had over 46,000 local clubs and more than 1.4 million members in over 200 countries around the world. Headquartered in Chambly, Georgia, United States, the organization aims to meet the needs of communities on a local and global scale. Okay, I'm not going to go into it. I did hear some of this book growing up when a school teacher was reading it to the class, and people say good things about it, but people say a lot of bad things about it too, saying that it's influential to children um, as far as occult ideas. Uh, this particular book, this particular book, is a series of books, I think. Narnia books. Of course, there's movies made about it, but I understand that the main theme in this book was um, gluttony, and then you have... well, I'm not going to go into this story, but uh, yeah, the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. It's a main character, I guess. Okay, so in alchemy, there's this idea of the green lion eating the sun, and I'm just going to read what it says in this particular website. One of the illustrations is of a green lion eating the sun, which could be taken as meaning it is a substance which absorbs gold. Indeed, the translation says as much. Of our mercy, which is the green lion devouring the sun, there is also the text, I am the true green and golden lion without cares. In me, all the secrets of the philosophers are hidden, associated with the picture. Here's a larger image. Okay, Rebel Without a Cause. If there's some strange chance that you're actually watching this, I think this came from the a grave marker at the Glasgow Cathedral. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think you might have made a video from there. So, yeah, if you have any insight, oh, please, if you don't mind, uh, leave a comment below. I love your videos. Thanks for watching. Okay, these particular images I'm going to show are from uh, Jewish gravestones. I think these are actually from Poland. I'm not 100% sure. And, well, there's a lion down here. As to the symbolism with the Vulcan kind of hand sign, not to make light of it, uh, you can look it up separately, but here's a crown. So you have a lion, these hands, and then a crown. I'm not saying I know what the meaning is. Uh, this is a different grave marker the hands, two lions, a crown. You've got some Hebrew. I'm not sure if this is a pay or a bet, but this is either a... well this is a noon probably, so this is an N, so it's like P-N, or maybe it's F-N or B-N, so it's like Pen or Ben or Fen, something like that which I don't know what that means. That could be somebody's initials. This picture kind of snuck itself in here, but um, here's the... I think this is the pre presidential logo of the Philippines, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, I'll, I'll zoom in. But you've got like a lion with a serpent body, and 
He's got a sword. A lot of these lions were holding swords. I don't see a crown, but I do see a sun, and the sun is often symbolized alongside the lion. Here's another image of the Lion of Judah. This is in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. You have the Lion of Judah. Here's another image of it. I cut it off at the top. This is also in Addis Ababa, but it's a different statue. Okay, I'm also going to try to leave this as a link in the description below, but there's a website which I think is more like a blog, and it talks about Jewish gravestone symbols, and to answer my own question, these symbols are a pei and a noon. The following two photos again show the pei noon lettering in the middle. Oh, okay, this image is simply a large graphic of the letters pei and noon, although the circles above each letter most likely have some symbolism. I'm not aware of what that is exactly. Okay, there might be some more explanation here. I'm gonna have. Well, you have to read it yourself. Okay, put the effort in here. Okay, the pay and the noon. These letters represent either the phrase po nikbar or po nitman, both which simply mean here lies. A variation that is sometimes seen is pay tet, which represents the phrase po tamun which means here is hidden. Okay, so once again, lions are very beautiful animals, and just because you see an image of a lion or a statue doesn't necessarily mean it has so, some occult meaning. Certainly not what I'm trying to say, but I'm sure in some instances, especially on some of the old architecture, uh, these lion symbolism type of gargoyles do mean something. Now the problem is, is that something happened 200 years ago or before there was a flood. If you're not familiar with this, there's some videos in the link in the description below you can look at which talk about mud flood if you're not familiar with that but uh, the problem is is that if something happened 200 years ago where there was um, burning of books and flames and flooding and somehow the earth was destroyed and reset or whatever happened it means that we don't have a lot to go by as far as historical books that we can draw upon reliably from the past. And yes, I do mean when I say that that I think a lot of the history has actually been falsified and it's not necessarily correct. So what do we have left to examine? And what we do have left to examine is architecture and symbolism which is available for us all to see. So maybe if we look to that, we can actually find some hidden meaning and some hidden answers. Okay, I didn't want to make a big long rant. But again, what are these lion heads doing on the side of all these buildings? What does it mean? And as a last comment, if you're curious to know as to what motivated me to make this video, the reason is that I've been looking into Gnostic texts. texts. Okay, thanks for listening.